Well, hello everybody, uh, Borodar or Prunhandar or Noswaithar, whatever time you're watching this, it's Father Richard here again with another online school assembly. And this is actually going to be my last uh, assembly for this term before the summer break. Um, I think I've done, including this one, 12 of these recorded assemblies now since January. And this is going to be the last one before we break up for the summer. So I hope you're all keeping well and keeping safe wherever you are today. Now, one of the things uh, I like to do is ask questions. I have a sort of inquisitive and a curious kind of mind. I like to find out about things. I like to know about things and discover things. And a good way of finding out new information and learning stuff is to ask questions. If you don't understand something about the world and the way it works, ask. Ask questions. And you can ask other people. Nowadays, of course, you can ask good old Google. Not always sure if you're going to get the right answer from Google, but at least it's a good place to try. So what are some of the questions that uh, pop into my mind? Well, you'll see the strange way in which my mind works. I'm going to share some of the questions that fascinate me. Here's one. How many stars are there? You know, you look up at the night sky, especially on a lovely clear night, and there seem to be hundreds and hundreds of millions and billions of stars stretching out into the, the vastness and the blackness of space. And I wonder, just how many are there? I wonder if anybody's ever counted. How many stars are there? Something that fascinates me. Another question, a bit of a strange one, but as I say, this is how my mind works. How do baby chicks know when to hatch? It's an amazing thing. Yeah, have you ever seen it happen? Uh, a bird, maybe a, a chicken, a hen, lays their eggs. Could be any kind of bird, of course. And then at the right moment, the chick inside pecks away at the shell and hatches out of the egg. How do they know when it's the right time to come out, to emerge into the world? Always fascinated me. Here's another question. Other sorts of questions we can ask. Lots of questions. What will I be doing in 20 years time? It's always interesting to think about the future. What will I be doing in 20 years time? 20 years time, I should be 65, which is really, really old. If you're watching this, if you're in primary school, I guess you're between the ages of five and 11, you'll be in your um, 20s and 30s, maybe. So I wonder what you'll be doing in 20 years time. Sometimes, though, you know, you ask questions and they lead to yet more questions. This is how my mind works again. Another question here. How old is the universe? This universe in which we live in with our planet Earth and the sun and the solar system and all the other galaxies. How old is it? How long has it been around for? A long, long time, I should imagine. But then if you find the answer to that question, how old is the universe when the universe began? Well, it leads to another question, in my mind at least, which is this one. Before the universe existed, what was there? If you go back to the start of the universe, and that's everything that there is, well, what was before that? Curious sort of question. These keep going round and round in your mind. Sometimes we find an answer, sometimes we don't. Well, I'm going to tell you today about an occasion uh, when Jesus met a guy who liked asking questions. And this guy came up to Jesus and said to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Bit of a complicated question. What it really means is, the man was asking, what must I do to be a good person? What do I have to do to be a good person? That's a pretty big question. Pretty important question as well. I guess most of us want to be a good person. What do we actually have to do to be a good person? Well, Jesus obviously was in the mood to play a bit of a game. He came back with a question of his own and he said to the man, well, what do you read in the Bible? What does the Bible say about being a good person? Now, this 
man asking Jesus knew his Bible quite well. So he said, well, it says in the Bible, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. Love God and love your neighbour. And Jesus said, yes, that's quite right. You, that's what you have to do to be a good person. But the man wasn't finished with his questions. And he said, ah, but who is my neighbour? Who is my neighbour? bit like my question about the universe. One question leads to another. Clearly in this man's mind, once he'd got the answer, love your neighbour, he thought, well, who is my neighbour? Who is my neighbour? Who do I have to love and be kind to and be helpful to? And uh, Jesus, again, was obviously in the mood to play a bit of a game, didn't answer him directly, but he told him a story. And the story was this. It's a famous story of Jesus from the Bible. Perhaps you've heard it. The story is all about a Jewish man. So a man who was of the same religion as Jesus. A Jewish man one day was walking along the road and he was attacked by a gang of robbers and they beat him up and they stole all his money and they left him really badly injured, almost dead, at the side of the road and off they went. So this poor man was lying there really badly injured at the side of the road. All his stuff had been stolen. Then Jesus said, along the road came another Jewish person. And this other Jewish person was walking along and saw the man who had been beaten up and robbed, looked at him and then just carried on his way. A little bit later, another Jewish man came along, looked at this poor guy who'd been beaten up and robbed, again shrugged his shoulders and carried on walking. A third person came along. Now, this person was not Jewish. This person was a Samaritan person. Now, what you need to know is that this, in Jesus's day, the Samaritans and the Jewish people were two different religions, two different races, really, two different nationalities. And they didn't like each other. The Samaritans and the Jews, they really hated each other and they would normally never help each other never have anything to do with each other. But on this day, this Samaritan person comes along, sees the Jewish man who's been beaten up and robbed, feels sorry for him, goes over to him, tries to patch up his wounds a bit, try and put bandages on him, try to talk to him, make him feel better, picks him up off the floor and helps him to go along the road and they find a hotel and the Samaritan man says to the manager of the hotel can you look after this guy who's been beaten up and robbed put him in a nice bed and look after his injuries give him some food and then tomorrow I will come back with some money and pay for all the costs that there have been in looking after this man and this is what he did. And then Jesus said, after he'd finished telling the story, to the guy asking the questions, he said, well, out of those three people, which one do you think was a neighbour to the man who'd been robbed and beaten up? And the guy asking the questions said, well, it's obvious, isn't it? It's the third person. It's the Samaritan. And so Jesus said, well, there's your answer about who is my neighbour and how do I be a good person? And off the guy went. Now, it's a very famous story. It's called the parable of the Good Samaritan, because the man who helped the one who'd been robbed was a Samaritan and he did the right thing. He did a series of good deeds. So he was the Good Samaritan. But the point Jesus was making is that he did all of this, even though the person injured was not from his race, not from his religion, not from his nation. And, as we said before, the Samaritans and the Jews normally hated each other. But this didn't let the good Samaritan stop him. He simply saw someone who was in need, someone who needed help, and he helped him. 
Now, you know, in our world today, we have many, many divisions between peoples. Some people don't like people of other races, other nations, other religions and have nothing to do with them. The parable of the Good Samaritan says that we should treat everybody as our neighbour. Regardless of what they look like, where they come from, who they are, we should treat every single person as our neighbour, especially people who are in need. And we should do what we can to help them. It's all very well if we only ever help our friends. But what we should also do is try and help those who aren't our friends. We should try and help those who we would perhaps never be friends with. Perhaps people we don't even like very much. We can still help them. And in that way, we are being a good neighbour, but we're also answering that question. What does it mean to be a good person? How can I be a good person? What we have to do is reach out and embrace everybody, everybody who is in need. We need to help. This is following the way of Jesus and following the example of the Good Samaritan. Well, Diochen Vaur Amrando, thank you very much uh, for listening uh, today. I'm going to finish now with a prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray for our world and we pray for everyone who is in any kind of need, for people who have suffered violence, for people who are living in war zones around the world or places where there is famine, drought or disease. We also pray for people close to home who are in need, in our local community, in our school, in our family. Help us to reach out and do what we can to help anyone who is in need. Amen. Well, thank you once again, as I say, and this is the last now of my uh, 12 assemblies I've done uh, this year, really, starting back in January. Now it's time for the summer holidays. Well, it will be in a couple of weeks time. So I really hope you have an amazing summer, that you get up to lots and lots of lovely things. Hope that the weather is really, really good. And I look forward to seeing you in September, hopefully in person, but if not, perhaps online for a bit. But let's hope we can get back to something more like normal life in September. Until then, as I say, have an amazing summer. Uh, keep well, keep safe and bye for now.